Hey Smashers, welcome to the Daily Smash for Wednesday, September 6, 2023 from West Hampton. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. Coming up, uh, Kelly on Jeff and Heather and Megan drama. Just just a little bit of it because... I said I wasn't going to say anything to you guys yeah. yesterday. I wasn't planning on even speaking about it. But listening to Jeff Lewis this morning, I feel like now I have to. Because <laughs> her really... name came up twice. So we're just going to address that. But we're going to get into it a lot deeper on our Patreon. In honor of Heather McDonald, we're going to do an emergency Patreon this week. And we're going to get into it a little bit deeper there. So if you want to hear the full story, go to Patreon. Um, we're cheersing with our Ilya wine, which is a proud sponsor of the Daily Smash. You can get yours at ilya.com at 20% off using the discount code Rick and Kelly 20 You can also get free shipping on three bottles or more. And I really wanted to drink this because um, it's poolside. Yeah, we're going to be poolside with Andrew be, Mullins coming over. And Rick's daughter is here, and we're just having a great old time. Yeah. Um, reminder to subscribe here on YouTube. We are fast approaching 41,000. We want to get to 50. Um, this, let's just do it this month. Let's just get to 50 this month. Uh, let's do it. Make help that us. happen. So help us. And then again, uh, Patreon.com, The Rick and Kelly Show. Um, it's an hour plus every week. We go more in depth on everything. And we can say stuff there that we can't say here. So we encourage you to subscribe. You have access to all 107 episodes as of this week. Also, I'm going to show you a video of removing a locked doorknob that Kelly taught me how to do. But first, let's... Uh, he did not know that? I have never removed a doorknob by using a drill. Did Were you life. shocked that I knew how to do that? Yeah. <laughs> but shock maybe isn't the right word. I was um, skeptical. Uh-huh. Because I've never done it. But I... I, any, anytime I doubt you, I'm usually proven wrong because you have this vast world of knowledge. And, and sometimes you'll say things and I'm just like, how could she possibly say that? And then I'm like, wait, it's actually true. Okay. And you can use a drill, but I didn't have the right bit. So we had to go to the hardware store first. Well, I didn't want to pay. Listen, when, anytime you get a locksmith, I've had many locksmiths. This is how I know how to do it. It's like 200 to $500. Yeah. yeah. And they're typically, no offense, it was not taken, but like they're usually from a different country. And they're hustlers. And they're hustlers. And, they're, and then. And um, I was going to call I locksmith. I always feel like I'm getting ripped off when yeah. I call a locksmith. I was going to, but Kelly talked me out of it, and good for you because yeah. I, all I had to do was buy a drill bit, and then it took a lot of elbow grease. I might as well show the video now. It was like four attempts to drill this hole into the lock, and. The bit was coming off the drill because I'm using these old school drills. I had to go buy the chuck key to tighten it. Uh, anyway, here, here's a here's a here's the video of me opening the closet. I'm gonna try and drill out this locked door handle that uh, I could lost the key to. Uh, it's a liquor closet, like an owner's closet, and uh, Kelly told me how to do it. Show me a YouTube video, but I had to go to the hardware store and get a chuck to tighten a new bit that I got a cobalt bit. It's alloy steel. Hopefully it'll work on this lock. This, these bottles are collector's bottles. Right here, look. Up here, the Woodford Reserve. These are collector's bottles from the Kentucky Derby. A lot of bourbon. Oh, are these the keys? <laughs> no, I think these are bike lock keys. So that was our owner's closet, but it's full of booze. And, and apparently, I haven't used it in four years. 
Because at the the bottom bottom the box of Whispering <laughs> Angel, it's like a case of Whispering Angel Rose I bought for the party when I met you in this house four years ago. That's when <laughs> so anyway, we got a lot we got a, a plethora of booze. Jashana was like she was looking at it going, What are you gonna do with all this? And I'm like, fine, I'll give her some bottles. The kit I'm gonna give her some she bottles. She doesn't drink. She can provide it for her friends. Mm-hmm. Uh and some of it we can keep here. Uh, some of it we'll give to your cousin Tara. If we don't, if we don't, because we're leaving for New York tomorrow, right? We're going to drive into the city uh, today. Actually, this is a Wednesday show, so today, the Wednesday, we're going to drive into the city. And tonight, we're going to the Comedy Cellar. I know the owner of the club, Noam. He's an awesome guy, and I reached out to him, and he's like, "Come to the Wednesday show. It's going to be." He said it's going to be a great show. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, I can't wait. And when he says that, it usually means there's some kind of headliner coming. Or else just really a good... The best comedians in the world perform at the Comedy Cellar. Mm -hmm. It is an outstanding, outstanding comedy club. If you haven't been, I highly recommend it in New York. And they usually do two shows every night. I don't know if they have them during the week, two shows. But when we when you came to New York and you were staying with remember everything shut down. Yeah. We couldn't go to comedy shows. We couldn't right. go to the movies. We had to entertain ourselves. It was Netflix at night and like walk in the city during the day. Yeah. Um, okay, Megan and, uh, <laughs> and Heather and Jeff. Um, just well, I've been trying to call uh, Heather McDonald. She's not calling me back. Okay, uh, what happened was, and I'm just going to give you a little clip, uh, sneak preview of this. We were in Mexico. I was with, this is what Jeff said, and I'll get into it a little bit more, elaborate more what Jeff said on our Patreon. Um, I was saying to Megan, I go, Megan, be the better person. Say sorry to her, even though you don't feel like there's any sorry warranted, maybe have a conversation with her. Let's all be friends or like make it amicable to where we can all hang out, right? Cause we are all going to this big, huge wedding in Las Vegas. And it would feel very, very awkward if we were all at this wedding and they weren't like nice. And, and Megan for the record and had apologized already. But it was still awkward. But Meg, it was awkward. And and not that Megan was in the wrong here at all, okay? But but I said just to be the bigger person. And, you know, by the way, it is hard to say I'm sorry. It takes a lot to say I'm sorry, even though you don't think that you are in the wrong. Just to say it for... Megan Weaver was crying and crying and crying, okay? And it took her a lot to say, to pull up the phone and say, hey, let's like meet for coffee or whatever. It took her hours to respond back. And she kept saying, and I kept saying, well, she's not responding to me. Don't worry. She's probably really busy. Mm -hmm. And she was. She was filming with Up and Adam, and she was filming with a couple other people. She was busy. But she didn't get back to Megan right away. She got back to me before her. Anyway, so I said to, um, I said to say sorry. And so she wrote back to Heather, and Heather said no. She wanted to meet up for coffee, and Heather, uh, Megan had this whole plan, like, to surprise Jeff with this newfound friendship between her and Heather, and Heather shut it down. And I Heather, felt bad and for I Megan. Called, Megan was and crying. I called, I called uh, Heather. Heather, pissed off. I was mad. I was really mad. I laid into her. I was arguing with her. I'm like, aren't you Catholic? Aren't you supposed to, like, our daily prayer of our father is, you, you know, forgive us who trespass against us or whatever. And she's like, no, I don't want to do it. And um, have a good night and whatever. Okay. She and was, then on she was, show, we, we were in, we got into it together. Yeah. Can I, can I say what Jeff said on his show? Yeah. He said uh, that after this all blew up between Heather and Jeff and things got really dicey, then Heather texted Megan and said, hey, uh, I'm actually in your neighborhood. No, 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 Megan calls me and says, you're not going to believe this. And she was crying. Like, Megan was crying. Legit upset. Legit upset. It was like a mean girl situation here. Yeah. It really was. And she, for whatever reason, um, now all of a sudden, she calls Megan. She goes, yeah, let's go have coffee. Well, she should have had that coffee when we brought it up to her attention and she wanted to make amends. She should have done it right then and there. Yeah. It would have been and, the right thing, the nice thing to do. It would have been um, a way forward And I never for told you them. guys exactly how mad I was at Heather 
And so, and then I'm going to talk about the earring situation. Oh, yeah, because that was the other thing. That he brought up, that I texted him privately. Do you want to save that for Patreon? I think I should. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. But we need content. What is that? Steam coming off the dryer. Oh, it opened up by itself. Um, we're going to get into this deeper on Patreon because it's, it's, it's pretty juicy stuff. And, you know, we, we've now seen the light. And I didn't really want to talk about this. I didn't want to get involved. Yeah. I don't like conflict, as you guys might think I do. Not in my real life. Uh, I, I do adore Heather, and I do adore Megan. And it's just, this whole thing just sucks really, really so bad. So we can still tell the story from our perspective without choosing sides. Yeah. Or without condemning one person or the other. We can just, because we are involved, the original, initial conflict happened at our house in the desert so whatever we'll get into it more on patreon this week the rick and kelly show on patreon uh, and then i have um, text messages from krista talking about it krista and heather were best friends so yeah and, and uh, poor uh, chef uh chef stewart just keeps texting me oh my god can you believe the drama that's going on <laughs> i'm like I, I know i'm not even on a show and i'm well i guess the drama does sell tickets right yeah. I mean, that's part of it. We went to Dockers last night for dinner at sunset. And if you haven't been to Dockers in Quag. It's only like five minutes from your house. Um, it, it feels close, but it's a little further than that. It was about probably about 10 minutes from Rich's house, which is about five minutes. from So 15 to 20 minutes, I'd Okay, say. it seems very but close. Quag is the next town east past West Hampton before you get to Hampton Bays and then Southampton. And we went on, it's on Dune Road. The, uh, Docker's restaurant on the bay. Is that where Jackie Goldschlinger lives? Schneider, Schneider. Schneider. She lives the other way, so she lives closer to the city. I, I reached out to her. She was here, but she went back. She's got kids in school. Yeah, I guess she was there for here for Labor Day weekend. Uh -huh. We went Monday night when it was basically empty. I think the night before Sunday, when we were first going to go, would have been packed. Um, it wasn't. Um, the service was. I didn't think the service was great. At Dockers? Yeah. I, it was horrible. Yeah. It took us forever to get a drink. Right. And then the chowder it took 15 minutes to yeah. get a clam chowder. Which... I don't know. In California, they go boom, and boom, boom. <laughs> flying fish, we order it. It's in front of us within <laughs> right. seconds. Um, so we're a little spoiled by that. But it was so beautiful. That, we got some it, that, the, the scenery was beautiful. Great pictures. I'm going to share some pictures with you. Uh, uh, my daughter Shoshana and I and Kelly and then Rich Baumer. My good friend from... And they got in a big, huge political debate. I first met, I met him when I first moved to New York City in 1994. And I've known him all this time, almost 30 years. And I was he's a like, freshman in high school, college, in 1994. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. He's like a brother to me. Like, I've known him for that long, and he's always been super cool with me. And he's a very successful guy. He has a beautiful home here, a beautiful home in Scarsdale. And they go to Florida for the winter, him and his wife, uh, Stacy. And, and I've known him forever. Um, but he, they're very liberal. And so we got into it. A, a screaming match at Dockers. <laughs> at the dinner table. So you never talked Shoshana about was this. like this the whole time. Like, oh, God. And, and I was just... And he was yelling at Shoshana. I, and <laughs> I she, wasn't yelling at I was, I was I was very animated in my arguments. Right. But uh, I just, I was like this. Oh, my God. Let's not talk politics. Like, but then you, well, were, you say, were getting into it, too, a little bit. Well, because... Because Shoshana says that she reads all these articles and they talk out of both ends of their butts and they are not, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, not just Shoshana. I felt the same way about Rich. Like, I, and, it's and like they don't Stacey. know. They just like splatter out their mouth and they're, and then they keep talking about like Trump. And, like, Trump's not in office. Right. He's not in office anymore. Like, and what is like, let's talk about the, like what's going on right now. That was the thing that I got most upset about. Like, why don't you care about the current president and what's happening there? And then, and and then I, you're I, like, oh, the Ukraine, because I'm like, there's so many problems right now. But here's the thing. I go, there's so many problems in LA and San Francisco. And I go, and then I was talking about the democratic cities and how they're a mess. And I go, do you ever see that? We try not to get into politics here on YouTube. <laughs> So I, well, I'm I, just saying, listen, and then I, they're like, and then... And I then, want to talk about this more on Patreon, okay, too. Okay, let's talk but about I this do, on but I it's, wanna... it's actually really, really... And then if you challenge them on it, then they go, you're, you're, you're yelling, or you're a lunatic, or you have anger management. They can't have, a, like you said, a well-versed um, debate. I don't know why I get so 
upset. I do though, when people won't listen to reason and when people reject fact-based arguments in favor of conjecture and I, I don't even know. But I, I wanna say this, this is very important. Uh, Rich and Stacy are great friends and we laughed afterward like we were all it was always in good a good natured debate even though we were animated it wasn't like we were fighting at the table we were arguing about politics etc but we were arguing in a good natured way right and it, it, it was an exchange of opinions and ideas it was it now, was it was an exchange of ideas and it wasn't like you're wrong we don't want to have anything to do with you we hate you you are this and this and that um, yeah, nobody was getting canceled. Yeah, no one was getting canceled. That's and I think that's what the younger generation. If you don't think like along the lines they do, the older liberals, they have they can listen more. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think they have like more of that. I yeah. They're, they 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 they're, they're for healthy mature, debate. They're and, more mature and have healthy debate. And that's I think what these I younger to... generations, they're like. Like, like you know, like horses with blinders. Yeah. They only see tunnel vision. They don't want to see what other people's perspectives are. They're right. You're wrong. And that's what I would call it, healthy debate. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's what it was. Right. It was a healthy debate. And it, I, I really was enjoying myself. And you know what? I that. like listening to other people's perspectives, too. Mm -hmm. They're not wrong. Right. Well, in some cases, I believe they were wrong. More on that on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about um, that, yeah. Uh, but I really like them. I really, really like, I really enjoy them a lot. Yeah, me too. I, I want to save this for Patreon. Oh, I did want to mention, oh, we got the couch cleaned because our summer tenant here in West Hampton had little dogs and I thought they peed all over the couch. Apparently they were licking their paws on the couch and that stained it. And the guys came, you called, you set it up. Sears beat Stanley Steamer. Stanley Steamer is a bunch of BS, okay? <laughs> First of all, you call and they're like, oh yeah, it will be $250. It's 270 270 for this little couch. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm like, okay. And then they're like, well, do you think what happened to it? And I'm like, I don't know, it's some dog. They're like, oh, do you want a deodorizer? I'm like, isn't that what the cleaning is? Yeah. They're like, well, that will be an extra $150. And I'm like, wait, what? And then they're like, and then if you want to add this on, some protection of the thing. Yeah. I go, it went then, from and then all of a sudden, it went from to, then it went up to 650. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, isn't what Febreze is? Isn't that like a neutralizer? <laughs> like, like I'll just buy Febreze and and do it myself. Like, what do I need to pay 150 dollars? Rip off. Huh? And then Sears did it for 200 bucks, but we're not paying for it anyway. The the tenant is, but we saved her a lot of money. Yes. So and as it turned out. I think, I think pretty it good. worked. It, it worked. It worked? Yeah. It worked. Couch is good. He's got, this is really good material. I bought this couch West Elm like 15 years ago. It's still in good condition. In really good condition. It's a little awkward with those big pillows that can slide off. That there's nothing to hold them on, but they're heavy. So, And it's a comfortable couch. So that happened this morning. Uh, and then we started making calls up for a surveyor. Kelly found... Well, I always get three... I always do this. I always call three places. See, I save money where I can, you guys. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, I save money on Stanley Steamer, and I save... Like, look it. Yeah, you did good. I'm a saver. So so uh, the first guy who called, I really liked him. I think we're going to hire him. It was 1200 bucks, including elevations, to survey the property, because the survey I have is from the 70s. And if we sell the house, it'd be helpful to have an updated survey. The second guy who called was... Coincidentally, from Fox Land Surveying, was thirteen hundred. I haven't had a chance to ask them yet if that includes elevations, but I'm inclined to go with the first guy because I liked him on the phone. The last person to call said it was going to be between two and four thousand dollars. Do you hear that jingle? So that uh, thing went open, the dishwasher, and the poof of like heat came out, <laughs> and now it like had a little jingle jingle. It's jingling to say. I'm ready. Do, 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 do. Come empty me. It sounds like a like a like a ice cream man. Um, I'm going <laughs> to admit right now, I can't hear it. You can hear that? I have profound hearing loss and the high frequencies. I can't hear. Shut up. I swear. You do not hear that jingle nope. jingle. I didn't hear. Did it. you guys out there hear that jingle jingle? You might have heard it, and you're you're thousands of miles away, and I I'm sitting right next to this thing. 
If it's a high frequency and it's and it's and it's not, he has loud, hearing aids. I'm not wearing them right now, but I was earlier. <laughs> good. So that happened. Uh, we're gonna get the place surveyed, and that's all good. Um, so and guess how much the survey is. We got. I said. I yeah. said the prices. Oh, you did. Yeah. Isn't that a whole different variety? The last guy was two to four thousand. Why? And what are you doing with that? He goes, well, the other guys may have uh, done some legwork already. I'm starting from scratch. Well, that's your problem. Okay. Can I read a couple comments from uh, sure. yesterday's show? Uh, Lydia Meyer said, oh, please, no more mask talk. Who's right? Who's wrong? The way I see it, it was scary. A lot of people died. Yes, lots had preconditions. Lots didn't. At the time, people did what they thought would help, and I do think it helped in some degree. I really don't think anyone needs to apologize to anyone. Everyone did what we were told and what we thought was right. And that dress is gorgeous. Aww. Um, I would just like I to like, say... Like, that's a nice way of like... That was, that was the argument that I appreciated the most last night from Rich and Stacy that people at the time were doing what they thought was right. And she, she said exactly the, the argument that we got into last night. That was one of the things. But I... Was this. And, she, and we're like, oh my God, you sound just like Stacy. Stacy had yeah. that point. Totally agree with you. Totally agree except with that, everything that you just said on that point. Except that they were shaming people who didn't agree. They were shaming the people who had alternative um, medicines and alternative viewpoints on this. Shaming anyone who didn't want to get a vaccine, even if presumably you get one, you're protected. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. In the same way, if you want to wear a mask, wear it. But if someone else doesn't, it doesn't matter because you have a mask. You're protecting yourself, right? So anyway, that, that was one of the reasons we got into it pretty deep. Um, Anne Wright said, uh, no way, sorry, this is a response to that. Some of us did not do what we were told at tremendous personal cost. Jobs, family, relationships, etc. Jobs, right here. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. I got fired, not for, okay, I have a lot more going on than any of those girls on that show. Mm -hmm. Okay, except Heather DeBro, maybe she's got. It wasn't most. for job performance. It wasn't for job performance. I would still have my job if I kept my mouth shut, like every single one of those people on there. I didn't. So uh, for having an alternative viewpoint other than Bravo's, I lost my good-paying job. And a lot of teachers and firefighters and cops and nurses, and military nurses. I know if so they many nurses that didn't want to take the, the vaccine. They were healthy. They didn't want this experimental jab, and they were fired for it. Uh, many were shamed up the wazoo and people saying vile things, hope you die. You shouldn't be able to avail yourself of medical care if you get sick. You shouldn't be able to go to the grocery store. You're a killer. And we were right. But if, if, the, if you opposed it, you were shamed, publicly shamed. And now you want to say, hey, no harm, no foul. Let's just go on. Yeah, I bet you do. No, absolutely not. And I could not agree more with that sentiment. Like, if you don't remember the past, you're doomed to repeat it. And I think it's really important that people remember that all these things we were told turned out, to, for the most part, not to be true or to be greatly exaggerated. And the people who were shamed, in many cases, were the ones who were right. You just can't live in fear. That's what, it, what we were saying all along. You can't live in fear. What happened? A lot of gr bad things happened. Yeah. Uh, people were dying. Funerals couldn't go on. People were dying alone. You couldn't see your elderly parents. Kids weren't going to school. Kids couldn't go to their uh, Washington, Washington D.C. trip like my daughter. Yeah. People couldn't graduate from high school or college. It was people closing businesses. Like it was a detriment. Yep. Okay. Then, then, then just going on. It was, uh, in retrospect, a, col a colossal cluster, you know what. Uh, Brooklyn and 9817 wrote, I want to thank both you, Rick and Kelly, for giving me an honest opinion about your experiences during COVID on your show. As a retired RN, nothing made sense to me from the beginning of the nonsense, especially what Dr. Death had to say. Talk about Fauci. The virus was real. However, the vax, mask, and six-foot nonsense was BS. This is from a, a registered nurse. I still have relatives who won't allow me to come near them. I suppose they are not very bright. They are going to start this crap again. Continue saying no. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, good. In the news now. In the news. Jamie Foxx holds hands with a girlfriend during his, a Cabo vacation months after health care. We talked a lot about Jamie Foxx when he was sick. and People were speculating all kinds of stuff about him. Mm -hmm. And I just want to just read this real quick. What because happened with Katie Holmes? 
I don't know, but he's dating uh, someone else now. Uh, Alice Huckstep. He was in Cabo for Labor Day weekend. He's 55, sporting a black jacket with a graphic print and a matching pair of joggers. This looks like they were at the... Uh, S at the um, FBO? FBO, the private... Um, terminal mm -hmm. at Cabo Airport. I'm sure he goes private. They were seen riding a jet ski together. Oh, they're holding hands. Yep. Um, this is several months after he suffered a mysterious medical complication in April. We don't still don't know really what happened, but he looks good. He looks healthy. Yeah. Um, they're smiling. Yeah, we, we walked down that same ramp from right. the terminal building to the waiting SUV. I want to talk about that too. Like, like uh, Jennifer Aniston got in trouble for liking something. He's, I guess, he says something anti-Semitic. We, my girlfriend who's Jewish, Brittany, she said to me, Rick's like, I don't see anything anti-Semitic. It in took this. me a long time to try and figure out what it was that he said or that was said that was so wrong. And I, and but maybe anyways, I just didn't understand uh, the context. Uh, 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 Jennifer Aniston liked it, and people went after her, and. Heather McDonald goes to the same thing. I'm sorry, but you know, there's a lot of negative things that people say, and I like them anyway. Just to acknowledge that I looked at it doesn't mean I like it per se. Mm -hmm. It's just hey, I hey, I heard you. You want the person who wrote it to know that you read what they sent, right? And it doesn't mean that you actually like it, right? It doesn't you just mean like that they contributed that, that they said that something. they said something that they wrote something. But doesn't typically, mean you like the the the. The, the, there's a lot of things where I like them, but hey, I acknowledge you. I heard you. You don't have to agree with me, but I like it. Like, but if, typically, if you don't like it, that re, that elicits a different response. If you read it and you're like, "F but, you," but there's been times where I, yeah. Hey, shows, welcome what, back. How'd it go? Find? What'd you find? You Not at all. You, you didn't wreck the truck, numbers. did you? It's okay. I didn't think they had them, anyways. I was just. Oh, no. damn it. Okay, well, we're, we're pretty much done here anyway. Um, we, uh, we have a lot more coming later this week. We're going to share our uh, visit to the city with you guys, some highlights of that, and um, a whole lot more. So thank you for watching, and uh, have a smash -tastic day. You guys take care and smash it up. I know we are. Woo! Let's get Time ready! Time to partay.